Reagan lost. Shrewsbury lost. The scene was set for Blackburn Rovers to sneak right back into second spot. All we had to do was be Oldham Athletic at Ewood Park. Job done, right? That's right, folks. Back once again. We're going to have a review this time, picking apart the latest, not cut final, Tony, the latest travesty that's been Blackburn Rovers as we fail to take advantage of 10 men Oldham and not get all three points. But, folks, it could have been much, much worse than that. So, anyway, before we get started, think of things. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you back up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. So, where do we begin? Where do we begin, Gaffer? Well, 2-2 was the final result, so on the, on the grand scheme of things, when you look at the results elsewhere, not too bad a result. So where do we begin with this one? Well, it started in an absolute horrendous form. Oldham getting themselves 2-0 in front before the halftime whistle, courtesy of two goals from a bloke called Nazarin on the 26th minute and the 38th minute. But then, Tony Mowbray give them a right good earful, and they come out guns blazing, the mighty Rovers. And they scored themselves two goals in quick succession. The first coming from Charlie Morgan, skipper, back in the lineup, and again from the free kick, he's getting themselves right back in the thick of things. The top goal scorer, and then the birthday boy Adam Armstrong on the 71st minute. And then you just thought, then maybe Robert's going to turn this completely around and win it 3-2, especially in, especially when Mwambe got himself out, sent off for a second bookable offence. But it was not meant to be. Hold, Oldham held on. And they managed to take away another point. That makes four for the season, Oldham. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics. Back to Rose, dominating possession, 53% compared to 47% for Oldham. Uh, as for Rovers, shot 17, eight of them on target. Uh, Oldham has seven, four on target. 11 corners for Rovers, two for Oldham. And Oldham with the dirty of the two sides with 13 fouls. Let's take a look at the starting 11s. First and foremost, the hosts, Blackburn Rovers, started like this. Ryer in goal, Naimbi, Mulgrew, Downey, Williams, Payne, Smallwood, Bennett, Bell, Graham, and Dak. So the, the, this is not the formation that was used. It was more like a 5-3-2 sort of deal or 5-4-1, something like that. But it just never worked out for Rovers today. Let's take a look at my ratings of the players. Obviously, not very many high numbers. In fact, the highest we've got is a 7, and that's for Mulgrew, who scored. And obviously, I think the better players... Came on the second half. I thought Travis, he had a blinder. But anyways, let's run through the numbers. Raya with a six. Naomi with a six. Mulgrew with a seven. Danny with a six. Williams with a six. Payne got a six. Smallwood got a five. Bennett with a seven. Bell with a six. Graham had a five. And Dak had a six. In fact, Oldham snuffled out Dak throughout the match. To be honest with you, I don't think he had one of his better games. Um, but they come, they do, it happens like that. It comes in drips and drabs. Sometimes uh, Dak is unplayable. And sometimes... Uh, people suss him out. And today, Oldham sussed him out. Uh, fair play to Mowbray making these changes at, at the break, taking uh, fan favourite Smallwood off. Downing also took, was taken off. And the substitutes did wonders. Thought Travis was immense, and, uh, and I think he's going to be pushing for a start anytime soon, as did uh, Adam Armstrong. And I'm glad he's got that hoodoo off his back, because I know there's goals in that boy, and I can feel it. In my, in my bones, that maybe, just maybe, he's going to be the answer to our goal-scoring uh, problems. And, uh, and uh, we don't really have problems, but uh, I'd like to see an out-and-out -out striker start in racking in a few goals. Let's take a look at the starting 11 for our visitors. Uh, Oldham started the match like this. Placid in goal. Demargan, Gerard, Brian, Mwambi. He's the fellow who got sent off. Fanny, Gardner, Pringle, Bryn, ex uh Davis up front. Um, so credit is credit goes where credit's due, and that is for Oldham. Um, they they come here, and I'm sure they would have settled for a point. They took advantage. They had a couple of breakaway opportunities, and they made Rovers pay. One particular area of concern for me is our defence. Um, it's always been my it's always been a major concern. I'm hoping when Lenahan comes back, maybe him and Mulgrew can reform that partnership that they had. Even though it wasn't too successful last season when they were in the championship, but their youthfulness. Uh, and the, the agility of, Len of Lenahan coming back into the lineup could prove to be as good as a new signing, fresh pair of legs, and maybe he can help steamroll us in the back four. Now you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say. What's the gaffer been saying shortly after the final whistle? Yeah, I think, you know, I think um, 
I think the overriding emotion is one of frustration, disappointment. Um, we've done a bit of work on, on, on Oldham this week and you know the frustration of the first goal is you know we plan was not to swing corners in, in unless Mulgrew was taking them from the right and we weren't going to put balls in the box for the goalkeeper to pluck and kick it 70 yards up the pitch and exactly that happened really and they scored so um, there was a bit of frustration in that dressing room at half time I have to say um, just needed to make some changes needed to change the direction of the game the fluency of the game and um, you know with huge credit to the players they went out there and did it and so yeah to, to score the equaliser still with enough time to to get a winner I think there's the frustration for us really we needed to be probably a bit more patient and keep the ball a little bit more especially when they went down to 10 men um, that said listen Jack Payne had a great strike that the keeper tipped over I think Armstrong's header probably clipped outside the post it um, yeah frustrating but uh, we'll take the point you know it, you come in and you see that your closest rivals have lost games it, it sort of compounds the frustration a little bit but um, it's a point closer it's uh, 15 games to go still got a third of the season to go we shouldn't be too disappointed we've got a, a long way to go hopefully that's the start of a another run that we can go on um i think it was important not to lose today and yet it looked like we were going to lose today sometimes when you go on long unbeaten runs um you can lose two three four on the bounce and um, it takes a bit of time to get yourselves going again but you know great credit to this group they uh, found a way of not losing a match today yeah, you could say that, yeah. Um, now, listen, I'm only disappointed for them. Bottom line, we're all trying to achieve here. We're all we all got the common goal. We're all got the same aim, and we've given ourselves a fantastic platform to try and get out of this division. And um, <clears throat> this is what we do for our living. I, this is what I do. I live away from my family for five days a week and don't see my kids. And and they they all want to play in the Premier League. I'm sure this is what we do. Match day, they have to turn up training work hard discipline around the building enjoy the atmosphere around the club but match day they have to turn up and um and first half wasn't good enough wasn't enough intensity enough urgency enough desire um second half that turned and yet the frustration for me is that that you can see such a swing why should that happen it needs to be there right from the first whistle every game because match day only comes around once or twice a week and uh, you have to be there for it Travis, listen, that's why he's had a new contract. That's why we, you know, it's just being conscious of the players that have got us to where we got us, really. And, uh, you know, we won a lot of football matches this season and we, we're currently third in the league, but with a chance of finishing the top two. And um, Travis had an opportunity, really, through through some injuries. We've had you know, maybe six first team players injured for the last month and a half, and Travis broke in. And But if he gets on the pitch and performs like that, then he'll stay in the team. and ultimately you have to do the job and that's what they've all been told it's there can't be any favorites it can't be what you've done in the past you have to perform and get the job done and, and Travis is a very hungry young man and wants to play football yeah listen it should give him huge confidence um, he changed positions as well as seamlessly um, so equally comfortable out wide right playing as like a an attacking fullback or a wing back, whatever you want to call it, and, and then to go and play centre midfield and rotate that position with Bennett was um, seamless. And you know, he's a very mature young guy, Trav. You know, he's always knocking on my door. If he's not playing for the first team, he wants to play the next night for the 23s. He's very hungry to play football. He's um, and we have to, you know, feed that I think by by not disappointing him too often and give him game time. And, and I'm sure his personality and character will demand that he gets in the team as, as we move forward yeah he's 21 today it's a fantastic birthday for him you know I, he'd be disappointed not to be in the starting lineup but I, I just felt the balance of the team against what I knew was some good footballers I think I think Burns a good footballer I think they've got good footballers over the pitch really, and we have to be get the balance of not being too gung-ho in the attacking setup of our team today and um, as they showed for staff, they have some good footballers and they were really positive and played on the front foot. And But um, we managed to push them back in the end. Um, didn't quite get the three points, but from 2 0 down, we'll, we'll take the point, especially as the other teams lost around us. Put it in the bag and move on to Tuesday. You've heard what the Kappas had to say and you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say. What the fans have been saying on social media. Let's take a quick look. Ian Herbert said this more than I expected at half time, but today really could have been a landmark with results elsewhere. Northern Rover, awful for 60 minutes, dominated the last 30 odd minutes, point gained on Shrewsbury and Wigan. Glass half full, Mash must try and win on Tuesday and cut out silly defensive errors. 
Emma. Uh, Emma Hart said this. Fantastic effort from the lads. Very unlucky not to get all three points. Great comeback on the whole. Meanwhile, Rob Young said this. Uh, could have been worse, uh, but at least Wigan and Shrewsbury both lost. Richard Bembo said this. 2-0 down, so a good point in the end. Good to see Wigan, Scunthorpe and Shrewsbury lo uh, losing. Graham Williams, a.k.a. Captain Eggbeard. Great comeback, Rovers. At least we didn't lose. And at least Shrewsbury and Wigan lost. Uh, Mark Atherton, need to be more positive from start. Again, started game nervous and not attacking opposition. When we attack teams, uh, when we attack, teams struggle, cope with us. When we sit back, we get undone or words to so that effect. Meanwhile, Luke Thornley left ourselves too much to do to win the game. Great comeback, lads, but message to Tony Murray. Don't use the wingback system again as we struggle to get a foothold in the game. Let's get back to the usual 4-2-3-1. Meanwhile, David Bannister, message to Tony. Don't use fancy formations again. Martin Shaw said this. I've gone from considering jumping out the window at halftime to taking the wife out for a meal and celebrating. Kudos to you, Martin. Meanwhile, James Barron said this. Got it wrong to begin with. Chased it at halftime. It's a, poor, it's a point from a poor position when the top two lost. We go again, Rovers. Meanwhile, on the book of face, a.k.a. Facebook, Mike Lehman said this. Defensive mistakes again, costing us precious points. Oldham pressed us high up the pitch. Whereas most teams visit and he would defend from the deep. Uh, they had a fantastic sport and fought hard and physical. We were miles better in the second half. Credit to young Lewis Travis. His confidence on the ball, energy and work rate was impressive. One defeat in 20, but two important points dropped with Wigan and Shrewsbury losing. Very, very uh, well summed up there, Mick. Uh, meanwhile, Andy Partington said this. Shrewsbury and Wigan don't slip up very often. So when everyone else around us is losing, it's poor uh, that we are, can't take advantage when we're at home to a second from bottom. However, on a positive note, it was good to get a point after being 2-0 down. It shows we have a fighting spirit and we won't give up. Ben Knight, simply not good enough. Dog shit defending again. God knows what Venus is teaching these defenders at Brock, Brock, uh, Brock Hall. But it's time they told the defence to make a challenge instead of ball watching. Feels like we've had a kick in the balls today with the results as well. Dan Hughes, five points out of 12. And all the deluded Mongs claiming still all to go and we're picking up, etc. Yeah, who needed the other seven points? Not us. We go again. Positive blind ignorance. So not all, not everyone's uh, content with that result. A lot of people are still miffed and aggrieved. Meanwhile, Christian Russell. So half time, two down. Moby changed it and we fought back and got a draw. So we do have a plan B. Plymouth have gone and beat Shrewsbury. So they didn't do any better than us and they were at home. We played poor in the first half, but once we started stretching them in the second, we were the better team. Our defence is not the greatest, but considering the first halves, uh, that's a point gain not too dropped. As I said, stay positive and the promotion will come. Grace Warburton, I don't know about you, it speaks a thousand words when Bennett is the only one with a dirty kit. Gets into every ball, doesn't give up, can pass the ball, read the game and is passionate about the club. Yes, Grace, full 100%. Uh, agree is a top bloke on the pitch and off the pitch. Dan Roberts said this. This man has provided stability and brought some good players. Man with a plan. We've got Tony Marbury. Meanwhile, Stuart Franklin. Could that be a point gained come the end of the season? I think we should be winning these games, especially as the sides around us lost. But I had taken a point at half time. Uh, yep, I agree with you there, Stuart. Leighton Holden. Mowbray out. Are some people for real? Yes, I'm so frustrated that performance last week and then the first half. Let's remember how shit the last few years have been and take the positives from how passionate these lads are to wear the blue and white. Mowbray has brought a great squad together for us at this level. We need to be more ruthless and start putting teams away in the first half hour. Hate how we set up to suit the opposition at home. 4-4-2 does it. It isn't hard. Up the Rovers on to Tuesday. Meanwhile, around other grounds are in the UK, there are some Rovers playing some football and some are not. Let's take a look at one of them at the MK Dons. They took on Portsmouth where Elliot Ward is now applying his trade, but he was not on the pitch and he was not on the bench. He was stuck in the tea room making the brews for the lads. Uh, so they've already sussed him out. Meanwhile, at Cambridge, uh, Lincoln City have got Scott Ward on loan. He was also on loan at Cambridge last season. Uh, he wasn't in the start at 11, but he was on the bench, did get some game time and he did also help with keeping the clean sheet. So fair play to you, Scotty boy. As for Sam Hart at Rochdale, game's postponed. They've also play uh, Tottenham in the FA Cup next weekend. No, I'm not sure if he qualifies uh, or if he's applicable to play. Uh, if so, good luck to you, boy. And we'll see you in the summer.
So let's take a look around the other grounds that uh, are key to us this season in League One. First and foremost, Shrewsbury did lose to the mighty Argyle, so thank you, Plymouth. Uh, and also a big thank you to Southend for doing a number on Wigan. They also did a number on us when we were at their place. So maybe, just maybe, the second half of the season might have a bit of a bit of a familiar sting to it for other teams. Also, our next opponents, Portsmouth, like I said, mentioned earlier, they did beat MK Dons. Also, Scumthorpe lost to Rotherham, and they are on fire at the moment. They could actually make a late push for the top two places at the minute, the way they keep going. As for the bottom of the table, Bury completely struggling. Rochdale have got five games in hand on some of the teams down there, so they'll need to start winning some of them. As for GB, uh, his team took on Warsaw and they drew 2-2. So that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out that forum, make sure you do so. It's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers just like me and also fellow Rovers who live locally. Uh, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter if you want to check me out on the go. Um, yeah, it's a bit of pill, this one, another bit of pill, and it's another rough result. But football is like that. We go on an unbeaten 18 game run, and then you hit a rough patch, and then we just need to get out of this rough patch, hopefully starting this weekend or this midweek against Portsmouth uh, when we head down to Fratton Park, which is going to be a massive, massive game. They're a big side, they're on the turn as well. They could be pushing themselves into the, the top six. Uh, for playoff contention. It's going to be a big old strap to the end of the season, the playoffs, and hopefully we don't have to get involved in that. But at the minute, we are. We are thick in that, proper in the deep. Massive fixture for Rovers coming up. We'll talk more about that match in the preview, which will be live in about 24 hours or so. Anyway, enough jibber jab about the older match. Let's look forward to the Portsmouth match. It's another a fantastic away day for the supporters. Hopefully you can get around there and cheer on the lads to victory and get all three points. Bring them back to Ewood Park. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.